Today we're going to talk about time. And time might sound like an easy concept, but for a computer, it's a little bit complicated. If you consider time as being hours, minutes, seconds, days, months, years, computers think in binary, and we usually get them to think in terms of base 10, but time isn't. So we need to use a, another library that helps our sketches work in time. Fortunately, there's a nice library called Time. But I thought to begin with, we would just show the time on our segment display. So I'm using the most popular one, which is the TM1637, the one that you're more likely to be able to get hold of. And it's a good display, and it's a bright display, and it's perfect for this purpose. It's I2C, so we're not having to use all of those wires or a shift register like we might have to with the bare display. So you include these libraries. We have to tell Arduino which pins the display is on. And we're going to delay one second, which means we're going to update the display every second. And we're just going to set the time to an arbitrary value right now. So I set it to 31 minutes past 9 and 0 seconds, 13th of November, 2018. And every time we go through the loop, we've got, we're going to wait a second. We're going to decide whether to blink or not. If we do blink, then this is what we do. We've got the colon in the middle of the LCD, which allows us to blink on and off. And we use this function, which allows us to set that bit to be on. Now, if we don't, need to show the colon, we can use the regular decimal version of the function, which doesn't have that feature. And it just takes the hour, which we're getting from the current time. We do want leading zeros. We've got two digits to update, starting at the leftmost digit. And then for the minutes, we get the minute from the current time. We do want leading zeros. We've got two digits to update and we want to start at digit two. And digits start at zero, so zero and one are for the hours, two and three are for the minutes. So the library provides us these functions, hour and minute, which extract the hour or the minute from the current time, which we can get with now. So that function now will provide the current time, which is why we had to set it above, because otherwise it would think it was 1970, I think January the 1st, 1970. We've moved the delay out to this separate function here. And all it does is it waits for that many milliseconds. And then it resets the timer and then it, it returns back. Now we're going to show an example where we can set the time using two buttons. One button increments the time and the other button decrements the time. And I'll leave it for an exercise for you to work out how to use four buttons. So you could have two buttons for the hour, two buttons for the minute. Same as before until we get to here where we initialize our two buttons as pin 8, pin 9. And we set those as inputs. I'm using pull down resistors, so high will be considered they're being pressed. We set the start time to essentially blank. It's the 1st of January 1970 at 000. And for debugging purposes, we're going to use serial. And again, we've set the delay as its own function. We're using 500 milliseconds as the default delay. And then, so that we don't 
have false positives and read a button press when there isn't one, we're using 500 milliseconds after each press is detected. If we read button 1 as high, then we're going to adjust the time by 60 seconds. And we're going to output to the serial monitor that we've added a minute. And if button 2 is signaled as high, we're going to take one minute away, which is take away 60 seconds, and again wait 500 milliseconds. We'll decide if to draw the colon again, and the function here to show the colon or not show the colon, and then we're displaying the minutes afterwards. And then in the better delay function, again we do nothing, and then again we set the millis to reset it. So the main thing we're doing differently is we're doing a small delay after we read the button, just as the button bounces, it's called debouncing the button, we just have a small delay so that we don't get false positives.